Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. It's finally that time. I broke out the serendipity books. I couldn't figure out what order to read them in, when we should do them, how many in a row. I have learned so much in making those decisions. Enjoy the purring. Kitten has joined us in the reading room and she's very welcome. So yeah, there are conflicting accounts online in the proper order the books go in. I only have a small fraction of the books compared to what the author and illustrator produced. Some of the information I found while reading through those was outright wrong. It said that Knitter Pitter was Glitterby's father of all things. That'll make sense later. <laughs> but most importantly, I learned the name of the book that I didn't have and desperately wanted. Shimmery. Hmm. It was in my elementary school library. I never once saw it in a bookstore. And as for the order that we are reading the serendipity books in, we are going with Ember picked the order. It's a good order, trust me. And so another thing that I did learn is pretty much all of these books are still in print. There are multi-volume box sets and individual ones. One thing I have learned about the reprints is that the pictures have been saturated with more color and they have also been cropped. So keep that in mind on those Amazon links that there are some variations between the different editions. Odds are the editions will be the newer editions, but if we can, we'll provide you links to both. So for our first entry from Serendipity Books, we are going with Flutterby. I know that might sound like the name of another pony. It's very similar to a yellow Pegasus. And this happens to look like a rather gray Pegasus. Hmm. Very nicely drawn, though. Yeah, so one of the things I loved about these books were the illustrations. So, this is Flutterby, written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. Subtext on the cover is Be Just Who You Are. Hmm, I think I remember that purple dinosaur. Dinosaur, he says. It's not? Does that look like a dinosaur? It looks like a plesiosaur. Dedicated to Denise Herman and Jerry Mills, two people who are the spirit of Flutterby, S. Cosgrove. In a burst of laughter and moonshine, one fine and beautiful evening, Flutterby was born. As her silver-blue cocoon shimmered in the starlight, she unfurled her wings and whinnied at the crystal night. For you see, Flutterby was not a common bug or butterfly, but rather a smallest of small, winged, white, flying horse. Nice lore so far. Yep. Also, she looked kind of gray on the cover. Mm hmm What is it describe her as? Oh, white. Hmm. Small, winged, white. Yeah, she's gray in the picture, too. She's gray in all the books. She's also cute as all get out. Yep. She looked about, and with a twinkle in her eye, she set off to discover her new world. The dawn of a new morning warmed her wings as she soared just as high as she could fly. Very nice art so far. I can see why people would be a little annoyed with it being cropped in the future books. Yes, the illustrations are lovely. It's one of the things that stuck with me about this series. Hmm. She soared up and around for an hour or more as her wings grew stronger and stronger. Finally, she thought, I wonder what I am and what I'm to do. She was thinking long and hard when suddenly Flutterby noticed a group of ants working industriously far below. That's what I must be, she exclaimed. And with that, she glided softly to the ground to join her own kind. Nice use of words. And two, interesting. I can understand she was kind of born by herself out in the middle of nowhere. She has nothing to connect to. She hasn't seen reflections, apparently, so... Well, we, she woke up in the night in a tree, and then she soared high into the air. Hmm. So, not really an opportunity to see. The ants ignored Flutterby as she landed amongst them, but she watched with much interest as they busily dashed about gathering food and carrying it to their hill. Well, she thought, if I am truly an ant, then maybe I should get to work too. She picked up some food, like the other ants, 
and carried it over to the hill. You get some size reference in this picture because there are some blades of grass and some flowers. Mm -hmm. And there is little Flutterby. Also, I love the muscle definition in that drawing. Yes, she looks very strong. She started to back down the ladder at the entrance to the anthill when she realized that she didn't fit through the opening. In fact, she got stuck halfway in and halfway out. She began to whinny in absolute fear, but the patient ants, with some of them pushing from the inside and the others pulling from the outside, yanked her from the anthill. Sobbingly, Flutterby said, If I'm an ant, then why don't I fit in our home? Silly creature, scolded one of the ants. You're not one of us. But what am I then? She asked. We don't know, they said. Maybe you're a honeybee. And with that, they all went back to work, chuckling and shaking their heads. I'm surprised they weren't more angry. Well, they're, they're very kind ants. Also, the size of an ant compared to the size of Flutterby. Flutterby is, could probably fit in the palm of my hand. Maybe they're right, she said as a tear dropped from her eye. Maybe I am a honeybee. So Flutterby flew just as high as she could fly, and suddenly below she saw a drove of honeybees collecting nectar from a patch of clover. How does she know what honeybees are? Yeah. Quickly she folded her wings and like a hawk swept swiftly to the ground. She watched them very closely to see exactly what they were doing. Then, following their every move, she carefully slipped into the blossom of a stalk of clover and scooped up an armload of nectar. That is an interesting image. It's a real pun insert here about horses. Mm-hmm. With her wings fluttering furiously, she flew into line with the other honeybees, who were headed for the hive. When she arrived and it was her turn, she deposited the nectar where the other bees had placed theirs. That wasn't so bad, she thought. I guess I really must be a bee. Contented, she decided to explore her new home. Everything would have been fine except that she backed into a bee. Now, the bee never really meant to sting her, but accidentally he did. Ouch. Let's hope this bee's not like a real bee, because that's doom for the bee. Ah, I think the world of serendipity is a bit gentler than that. Though, if you read Morgan Morning, not so much. Ooh. With a flick of her tail and a high-pitched whinny, Flutterby jumped straight into the air and landed right in the middle of a honeycomb. The bees all started buzzing around, laughing at the poor little horse as she sat stuck in the center of all that honey. Silly creature, they laughed. You're not a honeybee. But what am I? she cried as a honey-coated tear dripped from her eye. We don't know, they said as they pulled her from the honeycomb. Maybe you're a butterfly. And with that, they sent her on her way. Wow, these insects are really nice, but I don't think they would be. I know, invading their home space, and in the case of the honeycomb, disrupting a food supply. Mm -hmm. But Flutterby looks so sad. Mm -hmm. And well drawn. Though I think the eyes are a little big, but other than that. Well, they're filled with water from her tears. That magnifies them. Flutterby sadly flew just as high as she could fly, up where the sun is at its purest. And as she looked around for some butterflies, the honey melted from her hooves and dropped like a golden rain. From her high vantage point, she sighted below hundreds of beautiful butterflies softly circling an old elm tree, hoping that these surely must be her people. She swooped down with a kick and a giggle to join her own kind. And no recycling. It's another picture of Flutterby flying in the clouds. Even the pose is different hmm. from the first one. Yep, and the clouds are different too. Mm-hmm. It's a children's book. She could have gotten away with recycling. She landed on the edge of a branch and watched her fellow butterflies floating gently on the breeze. Ah, she thought, I must surely be a butterfly. So she spread her wings, stepped from the branch, and tried to float on a whisper of the wind. She floated for just a moment, but then began to fall. She flapped her wings furiously to gain some altitude and tried to float again, but this time she fell down into the branches and onto a big flat leaf. Hmm. Very nice illustrations. Definitely very nice. 
was the kind of drawings that stick with you. Mm. She just sat there and cried and cried. Finally, a wise old monarch butterfly flew up to her and asked, Why are you crying? I don't know what I am, sobbed Flutterby. When I came from my cocoon, I flew just as high as I could fly, and I spied the ants, but they told me I wasn't an ant. So I flew just as high as I could fly, and I spied the bees, but they laughed at me and told me I wasn't a bee. Then, just now, I flew just as high as I could fly, and I spied the butterflies. I tried to float like a butterfly, but I couldn't, so I can't be a butterfly. I just don't know what I am. You are a very sad Flutterby. The old butterfly thought for a moment, and then told Flutterby to look down through the leaves and to tell him what she saw. Very carefully, she leaned over the leaf and looked below. I see a pool of water, she said. Now, said the butterfly, look closer and tell me what you see. I see a tiny horse with wings upon its back, said Flutterby. Then she became very excited. Why, that's me, I see. After looking at herself for a moment, she asked, but what am I? You are you. Just as I am me, said the wise old butterfly. Nothing more, nothing less. But what does a me do? She asked. Let's see, thought the butterfly. You have very strong wings and can fly higher than high. You can whinny as loud as the wind and can see for miles. Hmm, I know what you should do. You should be the guardian sentry of fall for all the creatures of the forest. What you must do is fly as high as you can fly and watch for the approach of the winds of frost. When you see them, you must warn us. For all of the butterflies, the ants, and all of the bees must hide from the winter, and the frost is the first warning. Flutterby was so happy that she had found herself in something that she loved to do, flying just as high as she could fly. Hmm. Once again, no reuse of art. Yep. Another picture of Flutterby flying in the sky against a background of clouds. And these books always end with a little poem. So on some autumn morning, look into the frosty pool. You'll see in your reflection that you're a Flutterby too. The art's very nice. Very beautiful. And you can see by this back listing here that... The number of books I have compared to the number of books listed is a very big difference. Mm. When I was younger, I was focused mainly on the ones that had horses and pegasi and unicorns. A couple other creatures did slip into my collection, but at the time I was given them, I'm like, these aren't about unicorns. Why did I get them? So, were you already talking about what you thought of the book overall, or <laughs> should we move on to that? Oh, still very enjoyable. All of the serendipity books have a lesson. And be yourself is a good one. And that you don't have to be like everyone else, but you can still get along with everyone else. Because mm -hmm. no one was truly mean to her. Yeah, just like I said, the insects were surprisingly very nice. And, you know, she isn't focused on, oh, I'm special, I'm different. No, it's like, I want to learn who I am and what I should do. It wasn't just, okay, what am I? It's, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. A question a lot of people ask as they get older. Yeah. I can't believe it took me until I glanced at the back of the book to realize that that was a dragon. It looks more like a sea dragon. And since the world of serendipity is uh, more fantasy, I tend to label everything as a more fantastical creature. Ah. And the photos on the back of the author and illustrator just, well, the illustrator more than the author, show a bit dated in the clothing. But we'll go ahead and read this little section on the back. Serendipity books have warmed the hearts of young and old for over a decade, becoming classics in children's literature. Each beloved tale teaches youngsters how to deal with the challenges of their world, providing them with positive solutions to difficult problems. Join the whimsical characters in this beautifully illustrated collection of over 40 books as they entertain and inspire every reader. I stumbled right there because I'm like, 40? I think I maybe have 10. Wow. At best, 15. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> 
Well, maybe I can at least track down Shimmery. Or maybe you can release a list with this podcast and someone can send us a list of where we can get the rest for a reasonable price. We're not going to ask you to pay for them unless you want to go to our Patreon or Coffee. Also, you can just click on the Amazon link and actually buy the book. That helps. Yes, the referral links that we put in Ember's Reading Room do actually bring money back to us if you make purchases through them. wasn't going to get to that yet, but since Lux is uh, putting in a plug here, I may as well elaborate. Ah, what were you going to move on to? Um, I was going to do the closing. Oh, oh, the, the oh. actual novel closing. Okay, okay. Uh, and this has been Flutterby. Written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. Because we need to give proper credit. Of course. Because these are beautifully illustrated books and a bit more tightly written than uh, some of what we've read lately. Mm hmm And go and buy it and not just because the link gives us money. Go and buy it because it's beautiful pictures and it's a cute story. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. Leave a friendly comment, check out other videos in the Ember's Reading Room annals, and other videos on the Lux Analysis channel. You can support this channel financially through Patreon, Ko-fi, Amazon, and Ebates, none of which are affiliated with or endorsed by or sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or Lux Analysis channel content.